In physics, canonical quantum gravity is an attempt to quantize the canonical formulation of general relativity or canonical gravity. It is a Hamiltonian formulation of Einstein's general theory of relativity. The basic theory was outlined by Bryce DeWitt in a seminal 1967 paper, and based on earlier work by Peter G. Bergman using the so-called canonical quantization techniques for constrained Hamiltonian systems invented by Paul Dirac. Three, Dirac's approach allows the quantization of systems that include gauge symmetries using Hamiltonian techniques in a fixed gauge choice. Newer approaches based in part on the work of DeWitt and Dirac include the Hartle-Hawking state, Regi calculus, the Wheeler-DeWitt equation and loop quantum gravity. Canonical quantization In the Hamiltonian formulation of ordinary classical mechanics the Poisson bracket is an important concept. A canonical coordinate system consists of canonical position and momentum variables that satisfy canonical Poisson bracket relations Q I P J equals Delta I J display style Q underscore I P underscore J equals Delta underscore I J where the Poisson bracket is given by F G equals I equals one N F Q I G P I minus F P I G Q I Display style F G equals sum underscore I equals one carrot N left FRAC partial F partial Q underscore I FRAC partial G partial P underscore I FRAC partial F partial P underscore I FRAC partial G partial Q underscore I right For arbitrary phase space functions F Q I P J Display style f q underscore i p underscore j and g q i p j display style g q underscore i p underscore j. With the use of Poisson brackets, the Hamilton's equations can be rewritten as q i equals q i h. Display style dot q underscore i equals q underscore i h p i equals p i h display style dot p underscore i equals p underscore i h. These equations describe a backquote backquote flow or orbit in phase space generated by the Hamiltonian h display style h. Given any phase space function f q p display style f q p, we have d d t f q i p i equals f h Display style d over d t f q underscore i p underscore i equals f h. In canonical quantization, the phase space variables are promoted to quantum operators on a Hilbert space, and the Poisson bracket between phase space variables is replaced by the canonical commutation relation q caret p caret equals i. Display style hat q hat p equals i h b a r. In the so-called position representation, this commutation relation is realized by the choice q caret psi q equals q psi q. Display style hat q psi q equals q psi q and p Carrot psi q equals minus 
I D D Q psi Q Display style hat p psi q equals i h b a r d over d q psi q. The dynamics are described by Schrödinger equation. I t psi equals h caret psi. Display style i h b a r partial over partial t psi equals hat h psi, where h caret Display style hat h is the operator formed from the Hamiltonian h q p display style h q p with the replacement q q display style q mapsto q and p minus i d d q Display style p maps to i h bar d over d q. Topic: Canonical quantization with constraints. Canonical classical general relativity is an example of a fully constrained theory. In constraint theories there are different kinds of phase space, the unrestricted also called kinematic phase space on which constraint functions are defined and the reduced phase space on which the constraints have already been solved. For canonical quantization in general terms, phase space is replaced by an appropriate Hilbert space and phase space variables are to be promoted to quantum operators. In Dirac's approach to quantization the unrestricted phase space is replaced by the so-called kinematic Hilbert space and the constraint functions replaced by constraint operators implemented on the kinematic Hilbert space, solutions are then searched for. These quantum constraint equations are the central equations of canonical quantum general relativity, at least in the Dirac approach which is the approach usually taken. In theories with constraints there is also the reduced phase space quantization where the constraints are solved at the classical level and the phase space variables of the reduced phase space are then promoted to quantum operators, however this approach was thought to be impossible in general relativity as it seemed to be equivalent to finding a general solution to the classical field equations. However, with the fairly recent development of a systematic approximation scheme for calculating observables of general relativity for the first time by Bianca Dietrich, based on ideas introduced by Carlo Rivelli, a viable scheme for a reduced phase space quantization of gravity has been developed by Thomas Thiemann. However it is not fully equivalent to the Dirac quantization as the backquote clock variables must be taken to be classical in the reduced phase space quantization, as opposed to the case in the Dirac quantization. A common misunderstanding is that coordinate transformations are the gauge symmetries of general relativity, when actually the true gauge symmetries are diffeomorphisms as defined by a mathematician see the whole argument which are much more radical. The first class constraints of general relativity are the spatial diffeomorphism constraint and the Hamiltonian constraint also known as the Wheeler-DeWitt equation and imprint the spatial and temporal diffeomorphism invariants of the theory respectively. Imposing these constraints classically are basically admissibility conditions on the initial data, also they generate the backquote evolution equations really gauge transformations via the Poisson bracket. Importantly the Poisson bracket algebra between the constraints fully determines the classical theory, this is something that must in some way be reproduced in the semi-classical limit of canonical quantum gravity for it to be a viable theory of quantum gravity. In Dirac's approach it turns out that the first-class quantum constraints imposed on a wave function also generate gauge transformations. Thus the two-step process in the classical theory of solving the constraints C I equals 0 display style C underscore I equals 0 equivalent to solving the admissibility conditions for the initial data and looking for the gauge orbits solving the backquote evolution equations is replaced by a one step process in the quantum theory namely looking for solutions psi display style psi of the quantum equations c caret i psi equals 0 Display style hat c underscore i psi equals zero. 
This is because it obviously solves the constraint at the quantum level and it simultaneously looks for states that are gauge invariant because c caret i display style hat c underscore i is the quantum generator of gauge transformations at the classical level solving the admissibility conditions and evolution equations are equivalent to solving all of einstein's field equations this underlines the central role of the quantum constraint equations in dirac's approach to canonical quantum gravity topic Canonical quantization, diffeomorphism invariance and manifest finiteness A diffeomorphism can be thought of as simultaneously backquote-dragging the metric gravitational field and matter fields over the bare manifold while staying in the same coordinate system, and so are more radical than invariance under a mere coordinate transformation. This symmetry arises from the subtle requirement that the laws of general relativity cannot depend on any a priori given spacetime geometry. This diffeomorphism invariance has an important implication. Canonical quantum gravity will be manifestly finite as the ability to backquote drag the metric function over the bare manifold means that small and large backquote distances between abstractly defined coordinate points are gauge equivalent. A more rigorous argument has been provided by Lee Smolin. A background independent operator must always be finite. This is because the regulator scale and the background metric are always introduced together in the regularization procedure. This is necessary, because the scale that the regularization parameter refers to must be described in terms of a background metric or coordinate chart introduced in the construction of the regulated operator. Because of this the dependence of the regulated operator on the cutoff, or regulator parameter, is related to its dependence on the background metric. When one takes the limit of the regulator parameter going to 0 1, isolates the non-vanishing terms. If these have any dependence on the regulator parameter, which would be the case if the term is blowing up, then it must also have dependence on the background metric. Conversely, if the terms that are nonvanishing in the limit the regulator is removed have no dependence on the background metric, it must be finite. In fact, as mentioned below, Thomas Thiemann has explicitly demonstrated that loop quantum gravity, a well-developed version of canonical quantum gravity, is manifestly finite even in the presence of all forms of matter. So there is no need for renormalization and the elimination of infinities. In perturbative quantum gravity from which the non-renormalization arguments originate, as with any perturbative scheme, one makes the assumption that the unperturbed starting point is qualitatively the same as the true quantum state, so perturbative quantum gravity makes the physically unwarranted assumption that the true structure of quantum spacetime can be approximated by a smooth classical usually Minkowski spacetime. Canonical quantum gravity on the other hand makes no such assumption and instead allows the theory itself tell you, in principle, what the true structure of quantum spacetime is. A long-held expectation is that in a theory of quantum geometry such as canonical quantum gravity that geometric quantities such as area and volume become quantum observables and take non-zero discrete values, providing a natural regulator which eliminates infinities from the theory including those coming from matter contributions. This backquote quantization of geometric observables is in fact realized in loop quantum gravity LQG. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Canonical quantization in metric variables. The quantization is based on decomposing the metric tensor as follows: G mu nu d x mu d x nu equals minus n 2 plus beta k beta k d t 2 plus 2 beta k d x k d t plus gamma i j d x i d x 
j display style g underscore mu nu dx caret mu dx caret nu equals n caret two plus beta underscore k beta caret k dt caret two plus two beta underscore k dx caret k dt plus gamma underscore i j dx caret i dx caret j where the summation over repeated indices is implied, the index zero denotes time. Tau equals x zero. Display style tau equals x caret zero. Greek indices run over all values zero, three, and Latin indices run over spatial values one, three. The function n display style n is called the lapse function, and the functions beta k display style beta underscore k are called the shift functions the spatial indices are raised and lowered using the spatial metric gamma i j display style gamma underscore i j and its inverse gamma i j display style gamma caret i j gamma I J Gamma J K equals Delta I K Display style Gamma underscore I J Gamma carrot J K equals Delta underscore I carrot K and Beta I equals Gamma I J Beta J display style beta caret i equals gamma caret i j beta underscore j gamma equals det gamma i j display style gamma equals det gamma underscore i j where delta display style delta is the Kronecker delta. Under this decomposition, the Einstein-Hilbert Lagrangian becomes up to total derivatives L equals d three x n gamma one two k i j k i j minus k two Plus three R display style L equals int d caret three x n gamma caret one half k underscore i j k caret i j k caret two plus caret three R where three R display style caret three R is the spatial scalar curvature computed with respect to the Riemannian metric gamma i J display style gamma underscore i j and k i j display style k underscore i j is the extrinsic curvature k i j equals minus one two l n gamma I J equals one two N minus one J beta I plus I beta J minus gamma I J T Display style k underscore i j equals frac one two math call l underscore n gamma underscore i j equals frac one two n caret minus one left nabla underscore j beta underscore i plus nabla underscore i beta underscore j frac partial gamma underscore i j partial t right where l display style math call l Denotes Lie differentiation n. Display style n is the unit normal to surfaces of constant t. 
display style t and i display style nabla underscore i denotes covariant differentiation with respect to the metric gamma i j display style gamma underscore i j note that gamma mu nu equals g mu nu plus n mu n nu Display style gamma underscore mu nu equals g underscore mu nu plus n underscore mu n underscore nu. Dewitt writes that the Lagrangian has the classic form kinetic energy minus potential energy, with the extrinsic curvature playing the role of kinetic energy and the negative of the intrinsic curvature that of potential energy. While this form of the Lagrangian is manifestly invariant under redefinition of the spatial coordinates, it makes general covariance opaque. Since the lapse function and shift functions may be eliminated by a gauge transformation, they do not represent physical degrees of freedom. This is indicated in moving to the Hamiltonian formalism by the fact that their conjugate momenta, respectively π and π i display style pi caret i vanish identically on shell and off shell these are called primary constraints by dirac a popular choice of gauge called synchronous gauge is n equals 1 display style n equals 1 and beta i equals 0 display style beta underscore i equals 0 although they can, in principle, be chosen to be any function of the coordinates. In this case, the Hamiltonian takes the form h equals d 3 x h display style h equals int d caret 3 x math call h where h equals 1 2 gamma minus 1 2 gamma i k gamma j l plus gamma i l gamma j k minus gamma i j gamma k l Pi I J Pi K L minus Gamma one two three R Display style math call H equals FRAC one two gamma carrot Minus one half gamma underscore it gamma underscore j l plus gamma underscore il gamma underscore j k gamma underscore i j gamma underscore k l pi carrot i j pi carrot k l gamma carrot one half carrot three r and pi i j display style pi carrot i j is the momentum conjugate to gamma i J display style gamma underscore I J Einstein's equations may be recovered by taking Poisson brackets with the Hamiltonian. Additional on shell constraints, called secondary constraints by Dirac, arise from the consistency of the Poisson bracket algebra. These are H equals zero display style math call H equals zero and J Pi I J equals zero. Display style nabla underscore J pi caret I J equals zero. This is the theory which is being quantized in approaches to canonical quantum gravity. It can be shown that six Einstein equations describing time evolution, really a gauge transformation, can be obtained by calculating the Poisson brackets of the three metric and its conjugate momentum with a linear combination of the spatial diffeomorphism and Hamiltonian constraint. 
The vanishing of the constraints, giving the physical phase space, are the four other Einstein equations. That is, we have spatial diffeomorphisms constraints C A X equals zero display style C underscore A X equals zero of which there are an infinite number, one for value of X display style X can be smeared by the so-called shift functions n x display style vec n x to give an equivalent set of smeared spatial diffeomorphism constraints c n equals d 3 x c a x n a x Display style c vec n equals int d caret 3 x c underscore a x n caret a x. These generate spatial diffeomorphisms along orbits defined by the shift function n a x. Display style n caret a x. Hamiltonian constraints h x equals zero. Display style h x equals zero, of which there are an infinite number, can be smeared by the so-called lapse functions n x. Display style n x to give an equivalent set of smeared Hamiltonian constraints h n equals d three x h x n x display style hydrogen nitride equals int d caret 3 x h x n x as mentioned above the poisson bracket structure between the smeared constraints is important because they fully determine the classical theory and must be reproduced in the semi classical limit of any theory of quantum gravity topic the wheeler de witt equation Hamiltonian constraint of LQG The Wheeler-DeWitt equation, sometimes called the Hamiltonian constraint, sometimes the Einstein-Schrödinger equation, is rather central as it encodes the dynamics at the quantum level. It is analogous to Schrödinger's equation except as the time coordinate t display style t is unphysical. A physical wave function can't depend on t display style t and hence backquote schrodinger's equation reduces to a constraint h caret psi equals 0 display style hat h psi equals 0 using metric variables lead to seemingly unsurmountable mathematical difficulties when trying to promote the classical expression to a well defined quantum operator and as such decades went by without making progress via this approach this problem was circumvented and the formulation of a well-defined Wheeler-DeWitt equation was first accomplished with the introduction of ashtekar barbero variables and the loop representation, this well-defined operator formulated by Thomas Thiemann for. Before this development the Wheeler-DeWitt equation had only been formulated in symmetry-reduced models, such as quantum cosmology. Canonical quantization in ashtekar barbero variables and LQG Many of the technical problems in canonical quantum gravity revolve around the constraints. Canonical general relativity was originally formulated in terms of metric variables, but there seem to be insurmountable mathematical difficulties in promoting the constraints to quantum operators because of their highly nonlinear dependence on the canonical variables. The equations were much simplified with the introduction of Ashtekar's new variables. Ashtekar variables describe canonical general relativity in terms of a new pair canonical variables closer to that of gauge theories. In doing so it introduced an additional constraint, on top of the spatial diffeomorphism and Hamiltonian constraint, the Gauss gauge constraint. The loop representation is a quantum Hamiltonian representation of gauge theories in terms of loops. 
The aim of the loop representation, in the context of Yang Mills theories, is to avoid the redundancy introduced by Gauss gauge symmetries, allowing to work directly in the space of Gauss gauge invariant states. The use of this representation arose naturally from the Ashtekar Barbero representation as it provides an exact non perturbative description and also because the spatial diffeomorphism constraint is easily dealt with within this representation. Within the loop representation Thiemann has provided a well-defined canonical theory in the presence of all forms of matter and explicitly demonstrated it to be manifestly finite. So there is no need for renormalization. However, as LQG approach is well suited to describe physics at the Planck scale, there are difficulties in making contact with familiar low-energy physics and establishing it has the correct semi-classical limit. The problem of time All canonical theories of general relativity have to deal with the problem of time. In quantum gravity, the problem of time is a conceptual conflict between general relativity and quantum mechanics. In canonical general relativity, time is just another coordinate as a result of general covariance. In quantum field theories, especially in the Hamiltonian formulation, the formulation is split between three dimensions of space, and one dimension of time. Roughly speaking, the problem of time is that there is none in general relativity. This is because in general relativity the Hamiltonian is a constraint that must vanish. However, in any canonical theory, the Hamiltonian generates time translations. Therefore, we arrive at the conclusion that nothing moves. There is no time in general relativity. Since there is no time, the usual interpretation of quantum mechanics measurements at given moments of time breaks down. This problem of time is the broad banner for all interpretational problems of the formalism. Topic: The problem of quantum cosmology. The problem of quantum cosmology is that the physical states that solve the constraints of canonical quantum gravity represent quantum states of the entire universe and as such exclude an outside observer, however an outside observer is a crucial element in most interpretations of quantum mechanics. See also ADM formalism Ashtekar variables Canonical quantization Diffeomorphism Whole argument Regi calculus Loop quantum gravity is one of this family of theories. Loop quantum cosmology is a finite, symmetry-reduced model of loop quantum gravity. Problem of time Notes Carat Bergman, p. 1966. Hamilton Jacobi and Schrödinger theory in theories with first-class Hamiltonian constraints. Physical Review, 144, 1078 to 1080. Bibcode 1966PHRV.144.1078B. DOI 101103 fizrev Carat DeWitt, B. 1967. Quantum Theory of Gravity. I. The Canonical Theory. Physical Review, 160, 5, 1113 1148. Bibcode, 1967 PHRV.160.1113D. DOI, 10.1103, Carat Dirac, PAM. 1958. Generalized Hamiltonian Dynamics. Proceedings of the Royal Society of London A246 1246, 326-332. Bibcode, 1958-RSPSA.246, 326-D. doi.10.1098-RSPA.1958.0141. JSTOR 100496. Carat Thiemann, T. 1996. Anomaly Free Formulation of Non Perturbative, Four Dimensional Lorentzian Quantum Gravity. Physics Letters B. B. 383, 257 264.
Topic sources Arnaud, R. Dayer, S. Misner, C. W. 2008. The Dynamics of General Relativity. General Relativity and Gravitation. 49, 1997-2027, Archive, GRQC, 0405109. Bibcode, 2008Gregor, 1997A. DOI, 10.1007 per seconds 10714-008-0661-1. Witten, L. Gravitation, An Introduction to Current Research. John Wiley & Sons. pp. 227-265. Dirac, P. A. M. The Theory of Gravitation in Hamiltonian Form. Proceedings of the Royal Society of London A246 1236 333-343. Bibcode 1958rspsa.246 333d. JSTOR 100497. Dirac, PAM 1959. Fixation of Coordinates in the Hamiltonian Theory of Gravitation. Physical Review. 114 3, 924-930. Bibcode, 1959 PHRV, .114, 904D. PAM Lectures on Quantum Mechanics. Yeshiva University. ISBN 0-387-51916-5